In this last video, we are going to discuss avial trees. So an avial tree, which is named after Adels Adelson, Welsky and Landis, who were three different scientists, is basically a height balanced binary search tree, which is it has some balanced form in its height or it's more bushy such that the nodes, there are more nodes at a given level than a spindly tree. So for every node X, which is like each node X in the tree follows two different properties. The first one is it's a BST, like each subtree or each node follows the BST properties. And the second one is the balance factor is zero minus one or one. And what is a balance factor? We are just going to see in the next slide, which is the balance factor of X or node X is the height of the left subtree minus the height of the right subtree of X. So in this particular tree, we can see that like in the, in the last video, we discussed what is the height of a node. So basically the balance factor is the height of the no left node minus the right node. You can also use that terminology. So in this tree, in this particular node, like let's call this X, we see that there are no leaves, uh, like there are no children of X. So the left height is zero and the right height is zero. And that gives us the balance factor zero. Again, for this one, it's going to be zero because there are no children. Now for this one, it's going to be one minus one. So it's going to be zero. For this one, it's going to be again zero because like uh, it doesn't have children. For this node like Y, we have the left height that's two and the right height that's one. So it's going to be one, two minus one. If you are using the zero based approach, it's going to be like three minus two. So it's again going to be one, like it doesn't matter. Now some books follow this terminology, which is it's height of left subtree minus right subtree. Some other resources and books follow right minus left. So either is fine for, for the exam. Uh, we'll make sure that both of your answers are correct, which is minus one or one. Or if we have given you this formula, which is balance factor of X is height of left minus right, then we'll assume that your signs are correct. Otherwise, either signs are perfectly fine because some books follow that convention. Other books follow the, the other one. Again, like for this one, I'm going to do one last one, which is for this one, if we see the height of the left subtree, it's going to be four because there are four nodes based on the one based approach. And on the right, there are five nodes, which is you have one, two, three, four, and five. That's the longest path. So in this case, it will be four minus five, which is equal to minus one. So this is a perfectly valid avian tree because all nodes have balance factors that's zero, one, or minus one. Like let's say if uh, we try to insert another new node somewhere here, now the balance factor changes because this would be zero. The For this node, it will be one minus zero, which is going to be one. And for this one, it's going to be zero minus two, which is now minus two. So now that then, the, the tree will not be a valid avial tree. So how these avial trees work is like whenever we are trying to insert elements in this tree, we can use the different cases of rotations we discussed earlier, which is this right, right case. Like whenever we have a right, right case, we'll always have the balance factor of the parent as minus two and the balance factor of child as minus one. And this transforms to our goal state using the left rotation. Now in some other books, it could be like two and one because they might be using right subtree minus left subtree's height. Like their balance formula, balance factors formula might be the opposite. So in that case, it would be two and one, but basically the signs would be re removed. So Whenever we are designing an avial tree, we can keep a track of these heights by storing an additional height into our node. Like when we design tree nodes, we had this left, 
and right pointer right and we also had this value but for avl trees we can also keep track of this height and we can make sure like when we are implementing this avl trees we can ask you like uh, to perform some rotations when the height gets to this two phase which is like it, it will always go to the the two phase it can never go to the three phase because uh based on our implementation we'll make sure that whenever it reaches this state it is transformed to rotate to make sure it is balanced now again for the right right rotation uh, we had this particular case in this case the the parent node will have uh, the value of uh, the balance factor as two while for the child it will be one and this can be reduced to another state like uh, to our goal state by using the right rotation next we had this right left rotation so in this case the signs won't match so in in the left and right rotations both the signs were matching which was minus two and minus one and in this case it was two and one but in the left uh, right left rotation the signs will be opposite which is the parent will have the balance factor minus two and the child will have a minus a balance factor of one. So we are going to first right rotate it, which is in this way, because it's right left rotation. Next, we are going to left rotate it to make sure we reach to the goal state. So again, now, now this case is again a case of left rotation. So you can see we have like both negative numbers, negative two and negative one. And if we go back, we'll see like we have the same case that we had earlier. The next one is left, right. So in this case, the parent will have two and the child will have minus one. So in this case, we are going to first rotate towards the left and then towards the right. Now, a lot of students like to remember these one and twos. Uh, I personally do not like to remember that and I follow a more visual approach. For the exams, we are not going to ask you to implement an AVL tree or uh, write pseudocode to uh, delete a particular element or perform some more complex operations. But we can always ask you basic pseudocodes of like, let's say rotations, like how, how do you rotate a particular tree that has three nodes? Uh, not something which is too elaborate because we don't have so much time in the exam. Also, the questions that you can expect in the exam would be something like you already have uh, like three nodes or you are building an ABL tree. So how would you like make sure you perform the right insert uh, rotations in that case? And we are going to see an example of insertions very soon. So just to sum up, when we are performing ABL tree rotations, uh, we use this balance factor concept, which is it has to be zero, one or minus one. And balance factor is the height of the left subtree minus the height of uh, the right subtree. We have the four different cases of rotations where we have the nodes that are left left, which is the first one that we saw here. So uh, actually it's this one, which is left left. In that case, the parent will have a balance factor of plus one and child will have a balance factor of plus two plus one and parent will have a balance factor of plus two. So in that case, we rotate right. In another case, when it's right, right, we have minus one and uh, minus two and minus one as the balance factors of parents and child. In that case, we rotate left. And then when we have like plus two and minus one, that's a left, right case. Then we rotate left, right. When we have right, left alignment, which is in this case, we have right and then left. In that case, we had parents balance factor as minus two and child's as plus one, then we are going to rotate right. So this is just a note here, which is like if the balance factor of height uh, of X is equal to height of right subtree minus height of left subtree, which is the opposite of this, you just reverse all the signs in the table and you're going to like perform the same rotation. So basically these numbers will have different signs in that case. You can follow either approach. We don't care too much. Now, coming to the performance of this tree. So the, the, there, there is a proof on this, which is the height of an AVL tree with n nodes. Like if you try to insert it, 
is given by this formula, which is 1.44 log 2 uh, n plus 2. So basically, you can like derive this formula by using a Fibonacci sequence, which is we know that height of the left subtree is going to depend of on uh, the left subtree's height, while the right subtrees it's going to depend on uh, all the nodes in the right tree. So we are not going to cover the proof of this, but you can think of this that the maximum height of an AVL tree is going to be proportional to 1.44 log 2 n plus 2. Now, when we discussed about binary trees like BSTs, the height was for the best case of BST, it was something like log 2 n plus 1. So this height of an AVL tree is actually pretty good because uh, we typically have the same constant. It's just a little bit longer than the typical BST, which is roughly 44% longer. But what we, we can say it's much better than a height of BST that was proportional to N. So we still have the height as much less than a regular BST in the worst case. And that affects performance because in the worst case, since the height is proportional to log of n rather than uh, n, all the common operations of insertion, deletion, and search can be performed in order of lo lo logarithmic times the number of nodes. Now we are going to discuss in the next video how we can insert or delete elements in an AVL tree.